Now, before we get into today's video, I want to ask you this question first, because your answer to this question makes today's video topic very, very important. Do you want Justin Fields to be the quarterback in 2023? If you do, type Y for yes. If you don't, type in for no, because coming up on today's show, 15 offensive free agents the Bears could sign next offseason to help the quarterback in 2023. So do you want this same quarterback? Y for yes, in for no. Let's jump in to today's show. You're watching Bears Now by Chat Sports. I am Harrison Graham, and today's show is presented by True Classic Tees. Get 25% off with promo code CHAT when you go to trueclassictees.com slash chat. Very comfortable T-shirts. I'm rocking one here. Polos, shorts, tons of menswear for males of all sizes. Look good, play good, feel good with True Classic Tees. All right, 2023 free agency. You guys have been asking me this for a couple of months, and I'm finally doing the segment. Uh, will the Bears spend a lot of money next year, and who could they go out and get? Well, Ryan Poles, you got over $100 million to play with, roughly $107 million in proje projected cap. That, of course, uh, could be altered depending on if they cut, trade some players, et cetera. Uh, but you're at least going to have over $100 million to work with uh, unless, you know, they sign Roquan to a contract extension or whatever the case may be. But the point is they have more money than any other team in the National Football League. And let's be honest, the offense in particular – Needs work. Now, the defense has some holes as well. They're, you know, I think they're going to spend some money on that side. But uh, if you're going to commit to Justin Fields for another year, you need to improve the offense. So that is going to be the uh, focus on today's show. 15 free agents that the Bears could go out and sign in NFL free agency 2023 to help out the quarterback, Justin Fields. So that's what's coming up. Uh, some players that we will keep an eye on that Chicago could go out and hit. Because I always get questions, who could they sign next year? Who could they sign next year? Well, did a deep analysis for who is available on the free agent market for 2023. We're going to jump into that in just a second. But first, if the Bears make a move this year, signing. Trade, cut a player. Whenever they make moves, we make a video. Link is below, youtube.com slash bears now. Subscribe to the channel. We'll have you guys covered with the latest Chicago Bears news and rumors. So go ahead and subscribe today. All right, we're going to start with receivers. Broke these down into three positions. Receivers, offensive linemen, and tight ends. Five of each. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr., who's actually available right now, uh, but he's still rehabbing that ACL injury. He is widely expected to sign with a contender in the month of November. Chances of the Bears being one of those teams is slim, but next year, let's say OBJ balls out and helps the team go on a deep playoff run and then wants a multi-year high-paid contract. Bears got money. If OBJ shows he can stay healthy and play at a high level, the Bears could offer more money than just about anybody for Odell Beckham. He's a sleeper. Keep an eye on him for 2023 free agency. How about Juju Smith-Schuster? Listen, Juju uh, has started this year pretty well with Kansas City. He's had big years in the past uh, with uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers and uh, is a capable player. Is he a number one? I don't think so. I think he's more of a number two. But say you have him, Darnell Mooney, and you draft another receiver. Maybe you got a three-headed monster there, Cincinnati style, with uh, what they have in Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, and um, T. Higgins. Juju is capable of being one of those type of guys. I got him as another free agent wide receiver target. Alan Lazard, a couple reasons. One, he knows the system. Two, you're poaching him from uh, your rival Green Bay. And three, he's a pretty good player. Great blocker. One of the best blocking receivers in the NFL. We know this team's going to continue to want to run the football. Uh, and he's gotten a little bit better each and every year. Aaron Rodgers trusts him as a player. I know we hate that fraud up there, but uh, if Rodgers trusts you as a player, then uh, that uh, says a lot. Uh, Alan Lazard, a free agent next year, could be looking to cash in, and Green Bay may not pay up. How about McCole Hardman from Kansas City? Uh, Byer, uh, the Chiefs signed Byron, or the Bears signed Byron Pringle from the Chiefs. That one has not so far paid off. But McCole Hardman, really good speed, ran a sub 4-4 at the Combine a few years ago. Ryan Poles would, should know him uh, as he helped draft him back in 2019. I think he's a player that the Chiefs may have to let go because they're not going to have a ton of cap flexibility moving forward. McCole Hardman could look to cash in. How about Jarvis Landry? Uh, he was a player that the Bears could have signed this offseason. They chose not to. Not a great player anymore, but a reliable slot receiver. Uh, he'll be available once again after playing out this one-year contract with the Saints. Uh, he's a player to keep in mind. And you look at this list, guys. It's not a load of receiver free agent class. You may have to look toward the NFL draft uh, to get some elite uh, talent or on the trade market. 
Who will be the number one receiver for the Bears next year? If you think it's going to be Darnell Mooney again, type DM. If you think it's going to be other, someone else, type O. Or take a step and go above and beyond and uh, pick another name uh, down in the comments. Someone I mentioned, someone I'm forgetting, a trade guy, a draft uh, name uh, that I should keep an eye on. Let me know who will be the Bears' number one wide receiver in 2023. My number one outlet of clothing right now is True Classic. True Classic Tees, they offer the most comfortable, best-fitting T-shirts for males of all sizes. Get yourself outfitted right now at trueclassictees.com slash chat. I, for one, you know, I find it hard to find T-shirts that are comfortable, that, you know, fit me well, that, you know, kind of hide the beer belly a little bit because you know how that goes. It's football season. We're drinking a lot of beverages, especially on game days. Want to feel comfortable, want to feel good, look good, play good. That's a motto here in football season. And True Classic Tees is going to help you do that. When you're going out to the pub uh, to watch your team play college football season, Saturdays, want to feel comfortable, get dressed real quick, go to your friend's place when he's grilling out burgers for game day. True Classic Tees is going to help you look good, and it's really easy, too. Uh, very versatile clothes, T-shirts and polos and other gear as well. 25% off with promo code CHAT when you go to trueclassictees.com slash chat. Get going with True Classic today right now. All right, uh, let's go to offensive line. Orlando Brown for Kansas City. Again, Ryan Poles overlapped. He should know him. Playing well, but not extremely well for the Chiefs right now. Obviously, uh, he's on the franchise tag as they could not agree to a long-term deal. Let's say the Chiefs don't want to pay up and they don't want to tag him again. Uh, maybe the Bears should swoop in and pay big money to Orlando Brown. Now, he wants to play left tackle. That's where he's been playing. Uh, would you flip Braxton Jones to right? I don't know. That, that could be interesting. Orlando Brown's certainly better than Braxton Jones right now. But if you like where Braxton Jones' development is, maybe Orlando Brown isn't the perfect fit. How about Elton Jenkins? Uh, he is not someone who needs to play a specific uh, position. His versatility is just unbelievable. Look at what he's done with the Packers in his career. Left tackle, over 500 snaps. Left guard, over 1,600 snaps. Center, almost 300 snaps. Only one snap at right guard, but if he can play left, he can play right. Uh, and then this year, he's been playing uh, strictly right tackle. He has done so much for that Packers offensive line, especially considering – uh, David Bakhtiari has been injured a lot over the last couple of years. Jenkins' versatility to move around has been valuable for him, them, and he's played well everywhere on the offensive line. I'm a big fan of his. Uh, I would pay for him. He's young, too, 25 years old, I think. Uh, he is a player I would monitor closely uh, if I was Ryan Poles. Jack Conklin, who's more of a right tackle, kind of like Orlando Brown is uh, a left tackle. Conklin's played strictly right tackle in his career. Now, Brown has played right tackle, but he wants to play left, so he probably wouldn't leave the Chiefs to come play right tackle unless they paid him like a left tackle here in Chicago. Uh, but Conklin's one of the better right tackles in football. He's probably going to want one more big contract. I think he's 30. Uh, could you pay up, put him at right, maybe go get a good guard as well, stick with Braxton at left? Could do that. You could go that route. Conklin's a name to monitor as well. How about Mitch Morris? Look, I think we all thought Lucas Patrick was for sure going to be this team's center for this year and next year. Well, he's yet to play center this year uh, since he's been recovering from that hand injury. It sounds like he's going to be playing guard for the foreseeable future with Cody Whitehair injured. Maybe you just don't put him at center. Maybe he's not a center for this team moving forward. Mitch Morris, 30 years old, uh, one of the better centers in the game. He's not elite, but he's pretty good. Uh, he's helped anchor that Bills offensive line to protect Josh Allen. And Buffalo is a team that can't pay everybody. And if Mitch Morris hits the open market, teams will be interested. I would like to see uh, the Bears pursue that. Wes Schweitzer here, an offensive guard with the Washington football team. And Sealand, I see you in there. We'll, we'll hit that in a minute, my friend. Wes Schweitzer, uh, one of the better guards in football, an underrated name. Uh, I think he could come in and be your Cody Whitehair replacement. Um, if you're not sold on Tevin Jenkins, he could come in and play right guard as well. Uh, an under-the-radar name to monitor for Chicago. What is the biggest issue right now with the Bears? Type WR for wide receiver, type OL for offensive line. We just covered both of those positions. If you had to pick one, like one area you'd rather address, WR for receiver or OL for offensive line. Let's look at some tight ends, shall we? Um, Mike Kosicki, you know, he's more of a slot receiver, but he's a, he'd be a good weapon for Justin Fields. Great red zone guy, runs good routes, can catch the football well. Uh, I like Gesicki. He's kind of a tier two tight end. He's not as good as, you know, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, Darren Waller, but he's in that second tier. He's pretty solid, man, uh, and he runs really good routes. Dalton Schultz, kind of all reliable for Dallas. He's not super dynamic. He's not going to run 40-yard routes downfield, but – 
He's a great safety valve for Dak Prescott and now Cooper Rush. Uh, and he's a pretty good blocker for the Cowboys. Uh, certainly, uh, he could uh, do some of those things. He's probably – he's just he, – you know what he is? He's just he's, – he's what we want Cole Komet to be. <laughs> uh, he, he's gotten there. Komet has not. Dalton Schultz uh, has gotten to where we want Cole Komet to be. Hayden Hurst is next up here on our – uh, tight ends list. Uh, he uh, uh, got signed by Cincinnati last off season to replace. Uh, forgetting the guy, he went to go sign with the Jets. Uh, but uh, he's always been pretty solid. He's not great. Pretty good receiving tight end though. Good red zone guy. Uh, could be an option as well. Are you a Cole Komet believer? He's got one more year left on his uh, deal. He's been pretty underwhelming so far this year. I thought a breakout year was coming. Hasn't come yet. Type B for believe. Type D for don't. Are you a Cole Komet believer? Let us know in the comments. How about Austin Hooper, who's kind of fallen off in recent years. Got that contract with Atlanta, didn't really work out. Or no, with Cleveland, didn't really work out. Now he's with Tennessee. He's been kind of underwhelming. But he's supposed to be a good receiving option. Um, he'd be kind of a lesser name at this point, but someone I wanted to include. And then Robert Tanyan, two things. One, he's a Packer. You can poach him. Two, a uh, good red zone guy. Had double-digit touchdowns a couple of years ago. He's had some injuries since then, uh, but uh, a solid big body guy that you can just throw the ball up to, which is valuable to have in the red zone. You don't really have that big red zone target right now. Again, we're, we're waiting for Cole Komet, but uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not exactly holding my breath at this point in time. So there you go, 15 free agents that the Bears could go sign in 2023. Who is your top target for 2023 in NFL free agency? Let me know in the comments, and uh, we'll keep an eye on that market moving forward. Uh, some of these guys could get extended. Who knows? Subscribe to the channel when the Bears make a move. We have you covered here on the show, youtube.com slash Bears Now. All you got to do is subscribe.